All right, welcome. So we're going to be doing chapter 10, pure competition in the long run. So we talked about uh, pure competition in the short run last time, and we talked about the different markets uh, that, that we'll be discussing here over the next uh, week or two. So uh, the long run uh, is different than the short run, obviously, uh, but the main what, some of the main differences are that the firms can expand their contract capacity, right? So with the short run, all they could do was uh, produce at whatever level they wanted to produce at or shut down, right? They couldn't actually exit the market or enter the market. So in this case, the firms can uh, expand or contract capacity. So um, that's something they couldn't do in the short run and they can actually enter or exit the industry altogether. And so we know that with the pure competition that it's relatively easy to enter or exit the, the industry, okay? Uh, we're, this is kind of the setup page. So this is kind of the things that we're gonna say, okay, these are the types of firms or this is how the firms are gonna operate to work within our parameters to make all the things we're gonna talk about here correct. So first thing, entrance or exit is easy. All the firms have identical costs, so there's not one firm that has a better cost structure than any other firms, which really isn't um, totally you know, feasible uh, in the real world, but that's how we're gonna uh, talk about it in our in context today. And then we also have what's called a constant cost industry, and that is that the entry and exit of firms do not affect resource prices, right? So which isn't necessarily real life. For example, if you have more firms producing, let's say a certain crop, right? Let's say corn, then you're gonna have an increase. There's a big increase in people that are producing corn. You probably are gonna have an increase in, let's say the cost of nitrogen-based fertilizers, for example, right? There's gonna be more demand. The, the price is gonna go up for those things. But in our case, we're gonna say, that it's a constant cost industry and the prices for inputs aren't going to go up. Whether it's, uh, like like I said, fertilizer to go on the crop or even labor, right, to help us maybe drive combines or tractors or do at irrigation, those type of things if we're talking about ag, right? Okay. So uh, in, the, in the long run, Right? The firms are seeking a profit and they're gonna try to shun the losses. So in that case, they're gonna look at industries. They're gonna say, where should I go to get the best profit? And if I'm in an, if I'm in an industry that has losses, where I'm gonna get out of here um, and look for a better industry, right? Okay, so the production the third point down here, right here, right? The production will occur at a firm's minimum average total cost, right? So we had that average total cost curve before. It's gonna, the production will happen at the lowest average total cost. So they're gonna be as efficient as possible, okay? Price will equal minimum average total cost. So in the long run, right, and in the short run, price was equal to our marginal revenue, right? In, in this case, the price will equal the average total cost, okay? And what that means is in, in the long run, any above or any non-normal profits will be eliminated, as will be the losses. The profits will be eliminated, and so will the losses, right? So how does that work? Well, the entry, right? So people that come in seeking profits that are above average, right? Entry will eliminate these profits. So firms will enter. Supply will increase right, that's our quantity side, and then our prices will fall, okay? 
and prices in this case are our marginal revenue, which will approach or become average total cost is the way it'll work in the long run. So the profit will be gone. If our marginal revenue equals our average total cost, that means no profit. At the same time, the losses are eliminated, right? So firms will leave, they'll get out of there. They don't want losses, okay? Uh, supplies will decrease, right? And then our prices will rise. So that'll be, that'll be a good thing. And then they'll come up to meet the average total cost, right? In this case, they're gonna go down to meet the average total cost in this and eliminate. And in the, as, as we have losses, then the prices will come up to meet the average total cost. Okay, and so this is kind of the graphical layout of how it looks, right? Okay. So our, our marginal revenue or our price, right? Because we're still price takers in this case, right? Okay, so we're still price takers. Okay, so as, if we start out here, for example, uh, the, well, actually, so the, we're actually starting out here, right? So there's profits above average, right? So here's our profits up here. And as people enter the market, that drives the price down. And then our, we're, we're gonna approach this average total cost right here as well, right? That's kind of that's kind of the way it works with the single firm, right? The industry, kind of the same thing, right? The industry supply. So as we talk about supply, we're talking about total supply, and we're going to be shifting, right, from this point to this point, right? Because quantity will increase uh, as firms or as firms enter the market. So this is entry. Right, this is market entry for profits. Okay, so then, and then in the case of uh, losses, right, we're going to be going the other direction, right? Okay, so we're going the other direction where the price could be here, right, at 40, and we're experiencing a loss because we're below average total cost, and then. Uh, as firms exit the market, then our price is going to raise, right? So we're going from, from uh, we're going to we're going to have our price here, and we're going to shift, right? And we're going to eliminate those losses because the price is going to actually go up, right? So we're going to go from here to here with the price, right? As our as our S supply shifts, right? This is what's gonna happen. So, so that's kind of the idea. And really, our average total cost, marginal cost uh, are gonna match up, right? And so, and so the, our three questions that we had before, right? Should we produce, right? How much should we produce and what will our profit be? So what are the answers then to those three questions in the long run, right? So should we produce actually turns into a different question in the long run. And that's should we keep producing in this industry or should we exit, right? Or should we enter? Exit or entry is should we produce? And that's all uh, based upon, right, the... Uh, the margin where 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 things are is price below average total cost okay so in the long run this is where it's going to be marginal revenue or price right needs to be uh it's gonna match up with an, an equal average total cost. So if it's above average total cost, then we've got a profit. If it's below, then we've got a loss. And then that will let us know if we enter and produce here or if we exit. Okay, 
So should we produce? And that's the answer, right? Depends on where our, our marginal revenue or price is to average total cost. Okay. And how much should we produce? Uh, again, that is answered by our marginal cost equals marginal or price or marginal revenue, right? That's answered by that. Or should we should produce right at this level here. And then the other uh, answer is, is what would the profit or loss be? In the long run, it would, there would be none, right? It would be a normal profit. 